Hi, it's raining outside and when it rains my voice has to be very heightened. I don't like it. I'm living in an environment that has got a corrugated iron roof and so one little drop of anything sounds like a bomb landing so I have to be very loud. I want to get this message sealed today. We are not going to move over into tomorrow. I believe I've covered most of the points and now I want to tell you a story of Chinatown. Chinatown! The place you done sent a sister to go and purchase all of her goods. Like seriously, I just want to talk with a normal tone without being, without dealing gaga for women. But you know, ish guys, you know, my life. I, I literally cannot give this story in this climate with this kind of noise because I want to be relaxed when I tell the story is it possible for this rain to just stop so I can just tell it the world you guys is coming to an end <clears throat> well as we know it I mean it's going to take another thousand years to finally officially and once and for all actually be over but the world as we know it is coming to a blistering end and all these things that have been happening in the myriad of all of this attack from men that want to come into my let me not say, say men you know I, I keep on using a general term it's one guy but he represents a, an amalgamation and it's not just one guy's witchcraft that has done this to me but a conglomerate of men have put me in a position to be sought after so vehemently by essentially um a, yeah look what do they call this thing it's a domestic terrorist okay but in his case it's international because he's not in south africa like y'all need to understand there are so many any men like this in the world in these days like Janice and Jambrice I feel as if though you know I keep on talking about this Jenny and Jambri guy and you're like okay girl, fine. True Timothy Trishab, girl. Yo, I, what name? I actually want to read it to you so you can understand how you know the Lord saw it for two, you know through Paul highlight this guy as a thing of the last days there are so many other parts in the scriptures where God could have warned us about stealthy, pernicious, randoms trying to come into people's lives. You know what I'm saying? Like girl lives especially. The Lord could have totally done a whole like passage about them anywhere else in the book of the Lord. Anywhere else in the 66 book what? Called the Bible. He could have spoken about bad men or bad girls. If anything, the book of Proverbs is about bad girls and bad men. If anything, more than anything, is about bad girls. You know, warning sons, the beginning of Psalms, speaks about bad men and how it is that no bad girls, bad men and girls. Yeah, look, Psalms and Proverbs will, will give you quite a lot, especially the beginning, uh, sorry, the book of Proverbs. Yeah, no, um, the Psalms and the Proverbs speak quite a lot about bad girls and bad boys, but bad girls, bad women, bad females are so like broadly spoken about in the Proverbs uh, that like, frankly, if you want a nice little lesson as a man, you shouldn't even be in my ministry. But anyway, since you're here, whatever, just read the Proverbs and you're good to go. Like it's a life lesson. You will get told my son, my son, keep your hands away from ill gotten gain. Stay away from the immoral woman. Keep away from the contentious woman. Keep away from the rottenness in your bones and you'll be good. Stick to the wife of your youth. May her breast ever satisfy you into old age. Do that, guy. Do that. Do that. That's the Proverbs. All right. And like I said, in the Psalms, I believe somewhere in the beginning there, I think three or four, there was also a warning that do better. Guys, just do better. All right. Yeah. But, you know, the Lord is it's just so pro-patriarchy. Pro, the way he loves men. Yes, he loves women. Okay. But men are the ones that he has just guarded with this whole heart of, you are the ones to run the show on my behalf. Like literally, go and run the earth. Subdue it. Take dominion men and love your wives as I have loved the church and run the show with your wives. The instruction is given to men. So the Bible is dedicated to helping men just be better about it. And that's why they are entirely without excuse when they treat women so badly. That is why they are, this hair I've got into my mouth now. That is why they are without excuse when things fall apart. That is why they are also to blame when women fall apart. When women do strange things that they ought not do. The Bible is dedicated most wholeheartedly to giving to giving men advice men advice because the lord understands that men then ought be in a position to rightly divide the word of truth and so therefore give women advice 
Men are our teachers, they ought to be anyway. And the scriptures are dedicated to helping these guys out. Proverbs 31 is telling a man, this is how you find a wife. The epilogue of the great girl is not even to a great girl or to great women. It is to men about how to identify a great woman. Uh, a great woman. Literally, the scriptures are a guideline handy pocket book for dudes to do better. So that chicks can do even better. Okay? So that babies can do better. So that everyone can just get along. So that animals cannot be abused. Men are told to take care of your animals. Teach people to be better about it. And so women don't kick the cat. Yes. And there's only one place, not one, I mean, I'm pretty sure there are many, in uh, Titus as well as like um, Washa in Ephesians, the scriptures are, you know, God makes it clear that women respect your husbands, etc, etc. But when it comes to like warning women, admonitions to women, they're like literally 2 Timothy 3 takes a trophy. 2 Timothy 3, 2 Timothy 3 takes a total accolade, you guys, because there is nowhere else in the word of God, I believe, I would go so far as to make that wide yielding statement that might get me lambasted by Bible scholars for claiming it's the only place where we find such admonition. 2 Timothy 3 is the only place, only place where women are given a warning about bad guys. The Bible is littered with admonition to guys about bad girls. But 2 Timothy 3 is the only place where women are given admonition about bad guys. Okay, only place. And it's in the New Testament, nothing even in the Old. Maybe that's why some people think that the, what is this, the scriptures are, are sexist or misogynist. Think, no, the Bible is a patriarchal book at the end of the day. It's an instruction, basic instructions before leaving earth to people who are supposed to teach the earth and it's men. So really and truly, if the Lord intended for there to be a matriarchy running the show, the scriptures would largely focus towards teaching women stuff. Instead, it's about men because men were expected by God to be stewards, responsible ones at that with all of creation, including the females. So when this whole planet falls apart, we don't care, dudes, that Eve is the one that done, like eating the fruit first and made you do it bottom line is literally God made you first and was so totally about making you the leader that he made this entire book about helping you do things better to a point of not giving us enough pointers as women to figure out how to identify a really wretched guy I mean we are described as rottenness and bones of men like dripping taps better to live on a desert and a corner of a roof than to share a house with us if we're bad but where in the world do we find the scripture about a bad man I mean Nabal was a bad dude Dude. Abigail was the good girl and she was married to him anyway. All Abigail could say was like, his name is Nabal, that's why he's such a fool. Anyway, David, don't put conscience on yourself. Don't kill these people because if you kill them, really, you'll feel bad and you're a better guy than that. Why? Because you know Jesus' word. You're into that Torah business. You're that guy. Nabal, please, he's a fool. He's dumb. Don't commit genocide for this guy. He's nothing. And David heeded. Because this like peaceable and a quiet spirit that is so precious in the sight of the Lord in Abigail was worth the while for David to stay his hand, David, to stay his hand from genocide. So women figure out that they all do better because they know what makes for a great man just because that great man knows the Torah. Yeah, okay. All we have is 2 Timothy 3 and that's all we need, frankly. And the way that um, this thing is such an issue, 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 shoo, 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 you know, it's just a total issue. The way it is such an issue, it is made clear that the culmination of women, of men basically allowing women to run the show despite the Bible being dedicated to helping them and them mostly, them and them mostly, to know how to basically navigate this earth. Yeah, mm, they still somehow hand power over to a girl. They literally managed, despite the whole scriptures, dedicating life to explaining how it should be done to them. And they still let the girls run it. Some of the baddest and biggest men in history have been decimated by females when God has given them so much power. They've been given so much authority to run the show. And if they're godly about it, because the Lord blesses that which is his word, effected through people that honor it, he would have made life sweet for them. The Lord would have given men such a lovely existence if they just honored him. If they, upon the authority they were given by God, did not abuse it and so abuse their wives. If they did not be like, hey woman, silence! I said silence! The Bible says don't speak! When the scripture
scriptures make it clear that the Proverbs 31 lady considers a field and buys it. So to do that, you got to talk. And on top of that, if you don't listen to your wife, your prayers don't get hindered. That suggests that she gets to talk. You all need to understand that the silence of a woman is not quite just like putting duct tape on her mouth. But you know, these dudes are like, silence! With no like scriptural context, no hermeneutical application, just TOLA! Whoa! Yeah, no, because you did that, men. Because men did stuff like that. Now they've been overwhelmed and cooed by women that got angry, upset, and you know, just quite like disquieted with the way the women treated them. They were like, <laughs> "Who won the war, girls? Yo, how did that happen? I mean, like what? Like Beyonce, girl, you don't get to know you don't, brother, girl. Ah, uh -uh, that is." Sisters, no, it's not true. Huh? We don't want it. It's obvious. So are you claiming we do? <laughs> yeah, that's all Beyonce said after. <laughs> I'm angry because I am not being well treated. When the Lord made it clear, husbands, don't put your children in a position to disrespect you, disobey you, and maybe even kill you one day. And also, don't put your wives in a position to be so uh, wives in a position to be so mad that they'll be like. <laughs> We would not have gone astray and if they stood their ground we would not have stayed disrespectful but women on the other hand as well were like I'm sorry I've got a covetousness issue of this guy's power so they also wanted to run empires and so in running empires and because they're so beautiful and like so lovely isn't she lovely isn't she wonderful that's what men look at gorgeous women and think and so if these gorgeous women are evil we then get like anthony and cleopatra a dude idolizing a gorgeous girl to his demise and the demise of godliness and so she runs the show we get jezebel and ahab we get delilah and sam and I could go on mm -hmm. we get some of these like unions in history where the chick has run the show and basically destroyed the world and now we are at the end of the ages where the chick is indeed running the show and the guy is subdued but the guy is upset about being subdued because this book is dedicated largely to inspiring him to do better and now that he sees how things ought to be he wants to take force back getting power back by force and say to Beyonce <laughs> you don't run it whoa and Beyonce is like I don't care what you're saying church girls drop it like a 30 drop it like a 30 drop it drop it drop it drop it like a 30 do it and then Jay Z's like do what that well this is the whole of the law cause my girl done said it <laughs> And then there's a prostitute on a beast that the beast ends up hating and now he wants to kill her. Gender-based violence. This morning, I woke up to hear a conversation, a chatter of females upon listening to my content being like, Let us, you know what, sir? This is why we all to do together. Let us just be respectful of oneself. Really, we are the women. We have to take care of each other, ladies. We have to take care of each other. Because look at this guns. The stress. They think they can do it, but really we are many and on top of that we live longer. We get back to babies and we bounce back. Have you seen when a destroyed man is 90? How disturbingly ugly he is. But a woman is strong. We're the ones that raise children and yet despite the fact that they think we're ugly now that we are 50. We are the ones that look better than them because their bad ass has destroyed them and pulls our face. Ladies, Karabo's right, eh? <laughs> Karabo, planet in West Africa suffering because of these guys. Hey, they are these men. They want to mistake career, poor lady. They put in a position to suffocate. And then they are like, baby, I love you forever. And then they're going to go and tell us that we took Karabo like rubbish. And so because of that, we're the ones that rescue their hair like Cinderella. Do you know Cinderella's stepsisters? Do you know her mother? They're ugly. These men want to make us look like Cinderella ugly stepmom and eh? they want to rescue Garabo. What we need to stop, ladies, we must bridle on the issues that we have with jealous. And we must help the women out to grow, to grow rather. I meant to say, go. We, we need to help them along because then these guys are gonna destroy futures, and then afterwards claim that we are the ugly stepsister of Cinderella. They're gonna go and go, go take the good girls, and then afterwards come back and say, "See, you women are disgusting. You Jezebel. You are Delilah. All of you. 
Look at what you did to this innocent, cute, beautiful lady. Her name is Hannah, and frankly, you are Penina. They are going to make us like Penina. They're gonna make us like the second wife, the one that is not the most loved. They are gonna say we are Nia and Karabo Sanchez. Can't have it. So really, we need to love each other protection. We need to cover the woman. And then, when we have covered the woman, the man can no longer claim we are Penina Leah. Jezebel Vashti, or any woman that men eventually mock. We are not doing it. Ladies, protect the Karabo. <coughs> Say it to me now. Protect the Karabo. <coughs> Say it again. Protect the Karabo. <coughs> These guys will know that no more they're going to destroy and devastate the woman because we as women could not see that jealousy is destroying us. No more. Karabo's kiss, my sister, sorry. I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, did I evangelize women successfully? Or are they missing the point? And that's just the answer. The moment the females gather together to fight some men, because they don't want to be called Delilah or Jezebel, any kind of gathering where women are essentially just kind of upset at men, it's just a fulfillment of Bible prophecy that they will try and take over, that they will try and coup, that they will ever be at loggerheads in their households with men. It's just another feministic strategy. Like, women, you've destroyed the earth through your indiscretion and rebellion against God, and there is no amount of trying to now have my back and take care of women so that men don't after using you to get to me then call you Jezebels because then your reaction or your retaliation is the very thing that is going to add shall I call it salt in the open wounds of embittered men it's going to magnify misogyny and it's also then going to magnify misandry and so the war between the sexes is ever going to fester further it's not going to fix anything men are going to be upset that now you hypocrite women want to rescue Carabo so they cannot have a shot at her the thing is you have put me in the center of your stupid lives and you are playing but that's a pretty girl, pretty girl. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to live in a society where men and women are not getting along because that's not what God wanted. I want to go be fruitful, multiply, be the Eve to Adam, but not in a society where everybody hates the original writer by Eve to the writer by Adam. Like, I don't want to live in a world where men and women are loggerheads over the weird little division, dividing thing that I am or that women like me are. You have put women like me in a position to suffer like this because women, indeed, your jealousy has decimated you, but your reaction it's been misandrious and men your lust and your entitlement and your polygamy has also put you in a position to make women fight each other for your affection and now that it's coming back to bite you in the behind you are causing women to be divided against you not so much each other and literally there is no solution to this weird thing that's going on but the tribulation because people will always come up with all other solutions except for men like if you are busy charting some kind of a uh, march like you know stimulating society to defibrillate them from out of their slumber in order to fight and rev revolutionize against abusive men you are no different from the stupid culture in the u.s that's calling men toxically masculine which indeed they are i don't even deny it but that toxic masculinity is frankly a byproduct of the fact that as women you have been as evil as you are and you have in influenced your men because you're so gorgeous and however so evil to idolize you enough to forget what god has to say and so therefore listen to you instead of god and in not listening to you instead of god who has spoken volumes to them through this word they then have gone on right ahead to destroy the world by tarrying from this book and walking into your household who is the woman whose feet go down to death their end is inevitable you cannot fight fire with fire retaliate with more retaliation because really the instructions about what you need to do are also clear you gotta submit you also gotta be silent you don't get to rock up in church stand up and like start to come up with a feministic movement inside christianity there's no place for that in here you need to know your place you need to be subdued you need to have a peaceable and a quiet spirit and it's kind of impossible to actually walk in that peaceable and quiet spirit when you're upset when you're angry when you're vis when you're livid when frankly all different kinds of bodily fluids are bubbling in your body when your body temperature is through the roof you you can't be still you can't be quiet you have put yourself in a position to be angry to be worse to blow steam out the ear you've done that you've put yourself in a position to be so upset with men that you can't hold your horses it was easier for women of old to honor the scriptures and matter what they had to do because they had less qualms with men because they were less you know unsubmissive 
Now you have become so stare, gay, your ass, like Casta Semenya, Santing, rolling the streets, it's like Amaphrodite. Now you are so strong and butch that to honor the scriptures for, for real, Ganiti Ash and Mutada, you are strong. You've made yourselves men. You've plans to be on saying, Who run the world? Girls. Drop it like a 30. Church girls. Drop it like a 30. You have listened to all of that nonsense so much and you have gotten indoctrinated so far gone, are you, in that state that the only thing that can fix you is an uncomfortable body. The only thing that can bring you back down from that misogynistic height with that high, heavy temperature is a tribulation that will humble you because now you don't have a job. Now you don't have food that's coming into your mouth every day. Now you can't fight with your baby daddy over child maintenance. Now you can't give him an attitude telling him you're an independent woman and you don't need his money anyway. Now you can't do any of that because all of y'all be struggling and you can't find a bunker of a rich man to steal and loot from and so everybody's running for their lives and now you're humble. Now you're praying. Now you have been humbled because the Lord God Almighty made it clear that if you exalt yourself, girl, I'm going to humble you. Now you've been humbled. The tribulation is the only way out of your pride. It is. You have been spoken to, ladies. So those few of you that are listening to me prior to the rapture, this is what I got to say, dear lady, sister, girl. I know you don't understand, but you're going to have to understand. It's a tribulation now. What you had is gone. I thought it was sweet. I thought it was grace you were given, but you were like, no thanks, I'll pass. But now it's a tribulation. Go find a bunker. You don't get to steal from the woolies because looting is a sin against the Lord. You don't have to hunt for a rabbit in the wild, but you can't handle the truth. So figure out what in the world you're gonna have to do now, sister, sister. You're getting in the way of what Christ is trying to do here. So now he's moving you out the way. Lebo mantua, because mantua, and because look at our run, our sister again. There's no riddling that hard, not callous, feministic edge that makes it impossible for you to honor the scriptures concerning how you ought to be in the presence of men. And I mean, ladies, you're not the only ones that are super callous like the cons. Your men are too. Like everybody, the cons that are in these streets. Callous. Wait a king. Callous. Kai katuwa baga so dusty. Wait a king. Send paper. Kau kalle bala file. Nail file. Like men are callous, just as women are. So even when you submit, like that's probably what the Lord done told me years ago when I was like, I want to love my man. I want to be all godly about it. The Lord was like that peaceable and quiet spirit that is so precious in my sight in the presence of the climate of a misogynistic man of the 21st century is your death warrant, baby girl. He's going to enslave you to his entitlement. Literally, the only way out is the tribulation. Everybody got to be humble. Mm. If you exalt yourself, you will be humbled. The Lord brings low those who exalt themselves pride before a fall it's a thing it's been clear but you've not loved the truth but rather taken pleasure in your unrighteousness so god has handed you over to your reprobate mind and now you're in the tribulation and because you ain't got no money no more because you don't have that car to flaunt anymore because you don't have that big fat chunky salary from that job you didn't deserve because you used witchcraft to get it anymore now that you're all living on these streets or looking literally at the walking dead is zombie your cousin that passed away in 1982 oh, busy, uh, walking around in these streets now that that's your reality uh, i think that maybe just maybe on that day you might just bash your knees on the floor and ask god to help you out to get through these troubled times but before then you are going to be too arrogant there was too much anger too much wrath and entitlement and too much tumult and calamity between men and women for them to repent absolutely too much they are too upset and so like mc hammer can nobody touch them <laughs> That's what y'all need to get. So women's like decision that they must protect women, it is precisely the response. Your response, if it was biblical and holy, and therefore there's a shot for you to continue on the side of the tribulation, should rather have been. We need to start submitting. You were supposed to respond in the way that the Bible said you must respond. Instead, it's we must protect the woman. Must protect our femininity. If anything, even the trans environment wants to make themselves our environment. They must live our toy lives. What are they doing in my bathroom? What have I ever done to deserve a man with a manhood sitting in my toilet? Eh? It is honored. I could not believe there is no urinal here, brother. But you are in my bedroom because you are wearing mascara. Just because you got lipstick on, you won't sit in my toilet. There is no urine out here, brother. You are Mr. Step over there. You don't sit down to go pee. You don't do it. So now I'm going to go walk into the bathroom and see spots of urine on my toilet seat. I don't deserve to go through that in the office. Maybe in my home where I've got a husband and a son. But not in the office. But now you are so educated me to tyranny. There is no urine out here, brother. 
Why you won't be in my body? Why? But brother, why you slap me? Because you don't respect my pronouns. I'm she and I am her. And I'm not brother. And I do sit. Well, I'm sorry. You know, I'm going to use what I say. I'll keep quiet. But I don't see so far. I'm going to gather for myself. Five other girls so we can gather against you because you are too strong right now. I'm just going to say sorry, sister. Yeah, okay. Your response, ladies, <laughs> is not or ought not be. We need to start taking care of women. Your response, if at all the Lord was going to give you a shot, would have been we need to start submitting and seeing if we can't win our husbands over for God with a peaceable and a quiet spirit. Instead, it is to just be more extreme with your feminine so no thank you I don't want your help I want the help of God I am saved I am rescued and just because you're scared of being called Penina and me being called Hannah you now want to do what is better I don't even find attractive the prospect of being a Cinderella because who in the world wants to have all the women in the world around them that encircle them be called to ugly stepsisters when I get to be the only beautiful one all that will call to my doorstep is persecution and torture from jealous chicks for the rest of my days and that will make for a very unhappy life so no your solution is ungodly and the only way out of this like Nebuchadnezzar hanging out in the wilderness for seven years like a beast grunting is to eat grass for those seven years until finally you're like oh, 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 oh. the nations of this world are counted as nothing before god huh? no one can say to him what have you done i'm sorry yeah, that's what you guys need to go through. You need to be so stripped of all the things that made you pompous here on earth that you will finally make like Nebuchadnezzar and acknowledge that the nations of this world are accounted as nothing before Emmanuel and no one can say to him, what have you done? Your response is ungodly. Men are as calloused as the cons underneath your feet because you wear tight shoes. And so too are women. Men respond with greater misogyny because they can't stand listening to a woman tell them where to get off. And women respond with misandry because they can't stand to have men blame them for destroying a fellow women's life. This world is a matriarchy. Women are butch and men are girly and for those reasons the only way to do this is literally the holy great reset it is to redo things it is to reorder affairs there is no way out of this guys but through the tribulation and so i do what i do to hopefully bring some people into the rapture so that they don't have to go through the tribulation but i'm pretty sure the grand majority of my audience listening to such content as this will be in the tribulation because people are too arrogant to respond appropriately that's the dream that i had so really and truly when we are speaking about 2 Timothy 3, the description of the moral turpitude of the last days, it speaks volumes about what the climate of the earth is going to be. It's going to be full of men that have been so eroded of their masculinity that in order for them to get wives, no longer will they be doing mating calls similar to that of animals in the wilderness, the way that they're so masculine and androgynous and butch, but they're going to subdue women to nothingness. They are going to bring women to hollow note and ash in order to get some kind of a semblance of manhood in pursuing them. They're going to make like Janice and Jambri and they're going to make sure that the girls ain't got jack to ride home about their sad. Don't know ladies love them. Nobody protecting them. Mamas ain't acting like mamas. Aunties ain't acting like aunties. Cousins ain't acting like cousins. And daddies ain't acting like daddies. So girls are left all destitute. Whatever happened to taking care of women and children? Hey, that used to be a value once upon a time but it's not now so now that all these women some of whom are also children have got nobody taking care of them we're gonna go and get ourselves some child brides mm -hmm. we're gonna go get ourselves some like little damsels in distress that used to have entire thriving careers because their names are Garabo. we're gonna go and grab ourselves ladies we don't deserve they're totally out of our league but guess what we've put them in our league by making sure that nobody else on earth is taking care of women and children so the character flaw of the end of days it is nowhere else in the scriptures the description of so a capitalistic attitude and personality as this other than in second timothy 3 the character flaw of men is going to be that they're going to be full of exploitation over women and they're going to love to capitalize on them when they're weak precisely because women are going to be so androgynous so thick so strong so hermaphroditic so like Casper Semenyarek. Women are going to be so butch that men are going to have to destroy their lives just to get a wife. It's the last days. These things have been predicted and now they've happened. 
and now because they've happened i should smile look up and like literally rejoice for my redemption draweth nigh when you see these things happen look up for your redemption draweth nigh when you see a culture a climate full of men that have got to dis like literally decimate women's entire futures just to make them their wives just to get them to go on a date with them just like literally absolutely make sure that this girl's doors are shut and that no family even comes through for her rescue there is only one place in the bible that describes a time like that it's called 2 timothy 3 and its entire um description is eschatological it's the end of day second timothy 3 i want to read it before we move on to the next part just in case you you know think that i am not reading from the word of god 1 timothy 3 the title of it literally is godlessness in the last days 2 timothy 3 i was reading 1 timothy there the title of it is godlessness in the last day no 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 other time literally just in the last days but understand this that in the last days there will be times of difficulty other uh, passage or other translations say perilous times will come there will be times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self lovers of money so everybody that could be in a position to protect women know they are just too self-consumed people will be lovers of self lovers of money proud arrogant abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy heartless unappeasable slanderous without self-control brutal not loving good a treacherous reckless swollen with conceit lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having the appearance of godliness but denying its power avoid such people for among them this is where it gets really really tricky because it literally makes it clear that an exploitative attitude by men over women is a last day's disease for among them are those who creep because they think they're tlc mm -hmm, into households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions always learning and never coming to a knowledge of the truth just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men oppose the truth. Mm -hmm. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith, but they will not get very far. I did say I had that dream about the blacklist main character who represented the father, Reddington, saying, I'm going to handle them after the great falling away and when the restrainer is removed. They won't get far because the tribulation is going to ransack them. But they will not get very far for their folly will be plain to all as with those two men what's happening to my life is total fulfillment of the passages in this awesome book so i ain't scared i'm going home i'm not going to be forced to be dealt a bad blow by tiny little misogynistic men who have made that way because they listened to a whole bunch of horrible women that have become super bush and now they want their manhood back but at the expense of women that they want to subdue so they can totally be men again next part